is where the spirit of God is already moving. Happy view. The book of Hebrews chapter 2 verse 1, Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. There are things we have heard. Lest at any time we should drift away. We are the ones that drift away. The word does not sleep. We should drift away. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? So we said that the great plan of God for man is salvation. Salvation is not an afterthought. It is the plan of God from the beginning of time. And we've taken time to look at scriptures that establish that. That God's plan for all of man whether people in government, people out of government, people in the society, market women, educated folks, uneducated people, the law in society, everybody. God has only one plan for everybody. Salvation. He wants all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. That's God's plan. We began to deal with the fact that the power of Satan was in man's separation from God. Genesis chapter 3, when God said to Adam, The day you eat of it, you shall surely die. In verse 10 of that Genesis 3, I was naked. Why are you naked? Have you eaten of the three? I ask you not to eat of it. The woman you gave me. No, it's not the woman. In Genesis chapter 2, he told you that the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. So intentionally, you ate of it and now you have died. Because that death is separation. That's why he knew he was naked. Now, we establish that the power of Satan is in separation between God and man. And the defeat of Satan is in the reconciliation that christ has made available by his death and his burial we established that god did not crucify jesus men crucified jesus and then we began to deal with what happened on the cross uh, peter said he bore our sins paul said he was made sin galatians 3 13 says he was made a cause for us a cause is an unholy thing all right then we also said that what is the cross the cross is called an open shame the cross is called an open shame so when jesus was hung on the cross he was actually exposed to an open shame hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 says looking unto jesus the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame so the cross is the shame the cross is the shame on the cross jesus was exposed to an open shame jesus was exposed to shame philippians chapter 2 verse 8 says he was obedient to death even the death of the cross he was obedient to death even the death of the cross he obeyed into shame he obeyed into open shame what was the shame what was that shame the cross is an open shame the death of jesus was obedience to an open shame what was that shame well for us to be able to establish what that shame was we must establish what the cross means to the jews and the gentiles what is the meaning of the cross to the jewish person and to the gentile person when a gentile person sees a person on the cross what does it mean when a jewish person looks at a person on the cross what does it mean that will explain to us why the cross is an open shame Galatians 3.13 Christ hath redeemed us from the cause of the law. Be made a cause for us. For it is written. Cause is everyone that hangeth on a tree. So Paul now is making reference to what the cross means to a Jewish person. 
that anybody that hangs on a cross, that person is cursed. Hanging on the cross is a symbol of a cause. As it is written, cause is every man that hangeth on a tree. So when Jesus hung on that tree, it was a symbol of a cause. The person is cursed. What about the Gentiles? First Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1.22 To the Gentile. For the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. Unto the Greeks foolishness. So the cross means foolishness to a gentile or a greek person to a jewish person the cross is a stumbling block so what did the cross mean to both jews and gentiles well follow carefully when they took jesus to pilate what did they say he did when jesus was brought before pilate what did they say he did john 19 15 but they cried out away with him away with him crucify him pilate said unto them shall i crucify your king the chief priest answered we have no king but caesar first of all they denied him next verse then delivered he him therefore unto them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him away. Now, when they said take him away, what did they say he did? What did they tell Caesar he did? John 19, 6 to 7. When the chief priest therefore and officers saw him, they cried out saying, crucify crucify pilate said unto them take ye him and crucify for i find no fault in him i cannot condemn him but if you guys are convinced that you want to crucify him you can crucify him but as for me there's nothing wrong with this man are we here? Pilate said, I can't find anything wrong with him. But if you want to crucify, you can crucify him. But it's not going to be at my instance. Next verse. The Jews answered him, we have a law. And by our law, he ought to die. Why? Because he made himself the son of God. So the accusation was that he made himself equal with God. And under the Jewish law, the punishment for that in Leviticus 24 is stoning. When a man commits blasphemy, when a man equalizes himself with God, under the Jewish law, the judgment for that person is stoning in Leviticus 24. No man can make himself equal with God under the law. That was the gift. So these legalists who go about preaching Moses and then in one breath they say they are children of God. They are blaspheming. Under the law, nobody can be equal to God. Nobody can be united to God and nobody can be one with God. It's a law. Leviticus 24. That was why the Jews sentenced Jesus that Jesus is a man and now he equalizes himself with God. So crucify. And Pilate said, but I can't find anything wrong with this person. And they say, well, he has made himself equal with God and we have a law. And our law say, if anybody make himself equal with God, stone him. Hmm. Interesting. Leviticus 24, 16. And he that blasphemeth the name of the Lord, he shall surely be put to death. 
and all the congregation shall certainly stone him as well as the stranger as he that is born in the land when he blasphemed the name of the lord shall be put to death that's the law so no law preacher should claim unity with god no law preacher should claim that he has the life of god no wonder the bible says the law is not of faith is there anybody that claims union with god should be stoned he should be put to death that's why you cannot be a son of god until you are redeemed from the law you are not hearing me. you cannot be a son of god until you are redeemed from the law galatians 4 4 but when the fullness of the time was come god sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law why to redeem them that were under the law why that we might receive the adoption of sons under the law you cannot call yourself a son of god you cannot it will be blasphemy and the judgment for blasphemy is to be stoned so in order for us to be called sons of god we have to be redeemed from under the law and christ hath redeemed us that we may receive what the adoption of sons i'm an adopted son of god adoption here is not like going to orphanage to adopt children adoption here is a bible word for placement placement we have a placement as sons praise the lord pilate was afraid because he knew that jesus did nothing and he knew the implications jesus did nothing then jesus looked at pilate and said you have no power over me emphatically he told pilate then the people now said crucify him and why did they say that because they wanted something else they wanted him hung on a tree the judgment for blasphemy is stone but they didn't want jesus to be stoned they wanted him to be hung stoning is a judgment for blasphemy and what they said jesus has done was blasphemy so what should they be looking for to stone pilate wanted them to stone since that's what they say he did but they didn't want to stone because stoning is not going to allow him to suffer the shame when they stone him they stone him to death but on the cross you'll be hanging there exposed to shame and they wanted that shame because the cross is an open shame they wanted to put him to an open shame. Are you still here? All right. Look at Deuteronomy 21, 22. And if a man have committed a sin worthy of death, and he be to be put to death, and thou hang him on a tree, his body shall not remain all night upon the tree, but thou shalt in any wise bury him that day. For he that is hanged is a cost of God that thy land be not defiled which the lord thy god giveth thee for an inheritance that when a man is hung on a tree he should not be allowed to sleep on that tree that same day they hung him on that tree they must make sure he dies that day so that they bring him from the tree and bury him if not if a man remains on the cross all night the entire land is defiled because that man is a symbol of an accursed person that is why the cross is an open shame i'm teaching here as long as that man is on the cross he is a cost of god that is why he's a stumbling block the cross is a stumbling block to a jewish person how can a jewish person now ask an accursed person to save him am i teaching to us in our culture if they hang you on a tree you are cursed and they saw him on the tree and they saw that they brought him down quickly they did not allow him sleep on that tree meaning from all implications this man is a cost then so when you go to a jewish person and say receive christ 
who the accursed person so that's why the cross to a jewish man is a stumbling block am i teaching here it's a stumbling block they can't believe it that the savior of man will take the place of a criminal that the savior of mankind will die a shameful death the jewish man can't take that and to the greeks and to the gentiles it is foolishness how can a criminal be my savior it doesn't make sense he should first of all save himself so that's why the cross to the jew is a stumbling block to the gentile is foolishness but unto us that are saved power karatanaka because we understand the reason for the cross the reason for the cross was substitutionary sacrifice the power is when i know that that cross was my cross that crucifixion was my crucifixion that death was my death knowing that is power are you still in the house hey i feel this thing to the Jew, it's a stumbling block. To the Gentile, it is foolishness. But unto us, watch, let me read it. Let me read it. Let me, can I read it? Let me read it the way it is there. Let me read it. Let me read it. Now, before I read it, let me finish with that Deuteronomy so we can be free from it. Deuteronomy 21, 22, put it back. If a man have committed a sin worthy of death, and he be to be put to death, and thou hang him on a tree, his body shall not remain all night upon the tree but thou shalt in any wise bury him that day for he that is hanged is a curse of god that thy land be not defiled which the lord thy god giveth thee for an inheritance now so jesus was crucified to fulfill the scripture the issue with the tree is don't defile our land the reason why they take him out of town and put him on a tree is don't pollute our land. You are a pollutant. When they put a man on a tree, what they are saying is, you being on a tree has made you a pollutant. You are a corrupted person. You are a cause. Even God has rejected you. So crucify him. And make sure he's buried the same day. And that is what happened to Jesus. Joseph of Aramataya made his tomb available quickly. Joseph of Aramataya. You know why it had to be Joseph of Aramataya? It was not just some poor people that gathered money to buy a wooden box to put the body of Jesus. It was a multi billionaire grave. Because in prophecy, it was announced by prophecy that his grave will be with the rich so it had to be fulfilled according to prophecy you want to know where it is isaiah 53 isaiah 53 verse 6 let's start all we like sheep have gone astray we have turned everyone to his own way and the lord had laid on him the iniquity of us all he was oppressed and he was afflicted yet he opened not his mouth he is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before our sharers is dumb so he opened not his mouth he was taken from prison and from judgment Pilate, caesar all the places they took him and who shall declare his generation for he was cut off out of the land of the living why for the transgression of my people was he shrinking and he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death his grave was with wicked people and with rich people sinners and billionaires because both the wicked and the rich is the same message rich people don't have a different message it doesn't matter the wealth they have it is the same jesus died he was buried on the third day he rose that will save the rich is it clear he made his grave 
with the rich that's why a rich man like joseph of aramataya has to volunteer his grave because the scriptures has to be fulfilled remember he died according to the scriptures he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scripture so everything you find in the process of his death burial and resurrection if you go to the old testament it has been prophesied because salvation was not an afterthought it was the thought it was the plan from the beginning of time that's why we call salvation god's great plan for man he made his grave with the rich in his death preaching good so they move from blasphemy they move from blasphemy to put him on the tree for blasphemy they put him on the tree for blasphemy Pilate's punishment for blasphemy was the cross so the jews and the gentiles gabada met on the cross the jews and the gentiles met where the jews and the gentiles to the jews the same message to the gentile the same message they met on the cross if you understand he said i hear you the jew and the gentile met on the cross it was not a coincidence jesus was crucified like a criminal he was put on the cross like a criminal by the jews why he must not defile our land so what did they do to him they put him to an open shame that was what happened on the cross why is it a stumbling block to the jews and to the greeks well to the greeks is foolishness because how can a criminal be my savior he's a criminal on the cross he died the death of a criminal and to the jew he's an accosting he is a cost don't let him stay all night he is a cost let's get somebody quickly to donate his grave we don't need this man on that cross all night otherwise the whole land will be defiled matthew 26 38 then said he unto them my soul is exceeding sorrowful even unto death tarry ye here and watch with me next verse and he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed saying oh my father if it be possible let this cup pass from me nevertheless not as i will but as thou wilt next verse and he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep and said unto peter what could you not watch with me one hour that prayer in the garden of gestimony was obedience that cup was death look at that same scripture matthew 26 45 then committed to his disciples and said unto them sleep on now just sleep don't worry again sleep on now and take your rest behold the hour is at hand and the son of man is betrayed into the hands of sinners rise let us be going behold he is at hand that doth betray me and while he yet speak lo judas one of the twelve came and with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and elders of the people now he that betrayed him gave him a sign saying whomsoever i shall kiss that same is he hold him fast and forthwith he came to jesus and said hail master and kissed him and jesus said unto him friend we are for art thou come then came they and laid hands on jesus and took him 
And behold, one of them which were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priest and smote off his hair. Then said Jesus unto him, Put up again thy sword into his place, for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled that does it must be? How shall I fulfill the scriptures if I commandeer a legions of angels to stop this? Meaning Jesus knew what he was doing. He knew what he was going into. It was deliberate. It was intentional. It was not an accident. The father did not force him. It was his choice. And he made up his mind because you were on his mind. When he thought about you, he couldn't back down. When he thought about you, he couldn't stop the project. When he remembered you, he couldn't surrender. He was ready to go all the way because you were on his mind. Why? He was the only sacrifice that could have paid for yourself. He could have stopped. He could have stopped that shame. He could have stopped all that. That's why I can't tolerate anybody that makes caricature of the message of Christ. No, no, no. I can't tolerate them not even for a second. Because friends, what Jesus went through for me, nobody is able to even dare it. He could have stepped down. He could have quitted. He could have stopped. In the garden of Gethsemane, he had the choice. He had the choice. He said, I don't want the cup. He could have continued with that line of talk. He could have stayed with that line of thought. I don't want the cup. I won't take the cup. The father will not force him. Just like the father did not force Adam. When Adam rejected, the father didn't force him. He left him with his choice. Jesus could have also backed down. And if he had backed down, redemption would have been delayed. If not aborted. But it took your shame. That's why you shouldn't have shame. He took your shame. That's why he say, He that believeth shall not be ashamed. Why? He took the shame. He can't take the shame and you have the shame. No, he took your shame. Somebody shout, No shame. No shame. Say it again. No shame. One more time. No shame. Louder. Somebody say, can't you remember what you did before? I don't remember what I did before. He took my shame. I'm not ashamed. There is therefore now no condemnation. I refuse to be guilty. I refuse to be condemned. And I refuse to be ashamed. No, I'm a believer. I believe in what he did. He took my shame. I don't have it. And I shall not be ashamed. Somebody looks at you and says, shame. Tell him he took it. He took my shame. Glory to God. He could have stopped. He said, I could have asked my father to bring a legion, 12 legions, not even one. 12 legions and just sink this town down. They would just sink the town. 12 legions of angels coming in defense of Jesus. Their arrival on ground will have sunk down that city. You won't see anybody again. Only empty land with Jesus standing. He will have just smiled and said, good job guys. Let them be there for 30 minutes so they can learn a lesson. Then after that, they come out and he tells them, be careful. That would be the end of it. That, and he could do it. But he thought of you. You know the Bible says he was dumb. Because of you he became speechless. So that you can be speechful. So don't let anybody shut your mouth. When they tell you you cannot tell them I can. I shall. I will. I will. He was quiet so I can talk. They say he was dumb. He acted dumb. Because if he had just spoken carelessly, that would be the end. So to avoid any contradiction, he acted dumb. They jack him like a dumb lamb to its sharers. He said not a word. They asked him, are you a king of the Jews? He said not a word. They say, if you are the son of God, come down and save yourself. He said not a word. He acted dumb. 
because of you. But today, his dumbness is your speech. He took an open shame. He took the open shame. So whether the shame is open or private, it's not your portion. Somebody say, I'm a believer. I can never be ashamed. I thought you were shouting louder, I'm a believer. I can never be ashamed. He took my shame that I may have his glory. Somebody shall glory. Somebody shall glory. No wonder Peter said, I am a partaker of the glory. I'm a partaker of the glory that will follow. Thank you, Lord. Jesus was not captured. He wasn't captured. He gave himself. They didn't capture him. Even when one of them chop off somebody's ear to show you that he was not hoodwinked to die. He was not, he was not compelled to die. Even when somebody's ear was cut off, his good nature came out and fixed it back. He didn't say, idiot, let all your ears fall off so that you know that what you're doing to me is not a good thing. No, 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 no. He said, no, 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 no. Let's not go that way. He put it back. He said, they that kill with the sword shall die by the sword. He walked away. Showing you that that death was not by force. It was intentional. It was deliberate. And it was a choice because he had you in mind. He took your shame. You don't have any shame anymore. Hallelujah. He said, I can pray to my father. Put his hair back. He delivered himself over to them as a son of God. In Matthew 26, 56, you will see what that cross was. But all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. That cross was a shame. Even the disciples forsook him. Even the disciples fled. They didn't walk away. They fled. Because that shame was too much. Nobody could identify. Everybody forsook him. Even those that cut off people's ears for him. They fled. That's what the cross was. The cross was an open shame. When somebody will say he's doing deliverance for born again believers. What an insult. Why are you so wicked? How can you deliver people whom Christ delivered? Standard one. You think Jesus suffered all that? So that when you are born again, Satan can still be following you. So Jesus went through all that. So that when he comes to live inside you, him and Satan will be sharing property. No, it's a simple question. Let's think together. Come, let's reason together. You think Jesus went through all that. So that after he has risen from the dead, when he says, this is my territory, Satan will say, you cannot have it alone. And they share together. <sighs> what did Satan go through to share? It's a simple question. What did Satan go through that gives him a right to a man that has been bought with a price? Nothing. That's why it says your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Say therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God he said the church which he purchased with his blood he purchased it with his blood he purchased it with his life teaching good here he purchased it with his life he offered himself they took him to Pilate he was judged he was condemned and he was put on the cross 
He said, I can pray and a legion will come. But he didn't pray. Look at Matthew 27, 30 and 31. And they spit upon him. And they took the reed and smote him on the head. After that, they had mocked him. They took the rope off from him and put his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify. 34. They gave him vinegar to drink, mingled with gall. And when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. Look at 36. And sitting down, they watched him there and set up over his head his accusation written, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Mockery. Mockery. Next verse. Then, when there were thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and another on the left, and they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads and saying, Thou that destroyest the temple and buildest in three days, save thyself, and if thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. He was an open shame. 18 to, to, to not identify with. A defiled thing. He was accursed. Look at 41. Likewise also, the chief priest mocking with the scribes and elders said, He saved others. Himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross and we will believe him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now. If he will have him. For he said I am the son of God. The thieves also. Which were crucified with him. Cast the same. In his teeth. Now. From the sixth hour. There was darkness. Over all the land. Unto the ninth hour darkness unto the ninth hour the bible says he was like a dumb in all of this he said nothing what happened in that verse 45 of 27 chapter now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour that was the moment when he became seen that was the moment when he became seen. That hour of darkness, the Son of God had become seen. 46. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice. After sixth hour to ninth hour, the next thing that came out because the reality of his status had manifested he cried with a loud voice saying Eli, Eli, lama sabathani that is to say my god my god why has thou forsaken me he forsook him why will he why did the father forsake jesus he had become seen and watch after these three hours jesus could no more call him father he couldn't call him father all the time he walked the face of the earth he kept saying my father i thank you my father my father but for the first time he couldn't call him father he called him god because at this time god was no more his father he had become seen. He had identified with me. He had become a stranger like me. He had become a foreigner like me. He has become an outcast like me. He has taken my status. And the only cry that could come out of him was the same cry coming out of us. God, why? Why have you forsaken me? God, 
came to my side took side with me and for the first time God separated from himself for the first time why has thou forsaken me until Jesus nobody has ever been abandoned by God nobody not Adam not Cain nobody remember I told you a few days ago after the fall of man man kept running from God God kept running after man man kept running God kept coming man kept running God kept chasing man kept running God kept chasing after man but for the first time God walked away from man for the first time he walked away from man when he turned his back on Christ that's why Jesus cried that cry that cry is the cry of the ages that cry is the totality of the cry of humanity through the voice of its progenitor in redemption that cry is the cry of every sinful man is a cry of a man in the worst sinful condition is a cry of a man in the worst slavery of sin that came out of the mouth of his progenitor he cried the cry of the ages that is the cry your children will have cried that is the cry your great-grandchildren will have cried that is the cry your great-great-grandchildren will have cried jesus summarized the cry of humanity in one breath my god my god why hast thou forsaken me that was the cry of all of humanity all of humanity When the songwriter say we'll never know how much it cost to see my sins upon the cross we really don't know all of it we really don't know all of it that is the cup that cup was that separation when he was saying father take this cup what he was dreading was this hour when God and God will turn their backs on each other for man no wonder they kept saying what is man separation The drama begins now he is the scene now he is a cause now he is a criminal and now he is a convicted one he becomes the scene he becomes the curse he becomes the criminal he becomes a convicted one first corinthians 1 22 to 23 again for the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom but we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness but unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks Christ the power of God Kabayata when jesus cried my god my god why has thou forsaken me it was to fulfill the scripture which scripture psalm 22 verse 1 my god my god why has thou forsaken me that was the prophecy and that is why that the scriptures may be fulfilled on that cross it was the same exact words that jesus cried out he forsook him so he will never forsake you glory to god 
That was a messianic prophecy by David. Of a truth, God abandoned him. And that's the essence of John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. In Romans 8, 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? He abandoned him. He forsook him. No Holy Ghost. He alone. And he died an accosting. He died an accosting. And it was at that point that he destroyed him that had the power of death. Which is the devil. It was at that point. It was at that point. Matthew 27, 47. Some of them that stood there, when they heard that said, this man called for Elias. 50. Jesus, when he had cried again, with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. Separation. Listen carefully. Jesus died spiritually. He died mentally. He died physically. It's complete redemption. He didn't die spiritually alone. The Bible says his soul was offered. His soul. His soul was offered an offering. Then he said, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Spiritual separation. Then physically, he gave up the ghost. He died in the three realms of human existence. I'm teaching here. Yeah, that's why I told you that your soul is saved. Your mind, I mean your spirit is saved. Your mind is saved. Your body is saved. I told you that. It's only that your body is still awaiting redemption. But it is saved. Jesus is awaiting redemption. He's awaiting redemption. Your mind right now can experience redemption. Right now. What is the redemption of the mind? The renewing of the mind. You take the word of God, remove all the useless things they taught you in your head. Remove it, replace it with the word of God and begin to function the mind of Christ. Begin to operate the mind of Christ right now. Huh? What are you talking about? Let this mind be in you, which was also we are in Christ. You can have that mind now. Except you refuse. And how do you refuse to have the mind? By not coming to study and learn. Then you can carry a dirty mind on a redeemed spirit. But you see this body, this body has not been redeemed, but it has been purchased. It has been saved. It has been bought, but it has not been redeemed because we need this body like this to operate here. To operate here, we need this body like this. You are hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. We need this body like this to operate here. But redemption for this body is still ahead. But for this body, it has been bought. That is why you can bring this body under subjection. You can bring your body. Paul said, I put my body under. Why are you able to put it under? It has been saved. If it has not been saved, it's a wild system. You can't tame it. But you can tame your body. You can tame your tongue. You can tame your system. That's why a man's spirit can sustain his infirmity that is why you can lay hands on your body and heal it i'm teaching here that's why you can't die except you admit it ask any medical doctor medical doctors will tell you people don't die in the hospital until they give up there is a giving up moment for every human being. That is when he can no longer be it. That is when he now cooperates with the suggestion to die. And at that point, there are people that will still say no. And once they say no, why do you think people stay in coma for one year? 
a man is in coma for one year he's not talking he's not moving he's not nothing yet he has refused to cooperate what are you talking about what are you talking about you think somebody can just snuff out your life no every human being has choice either a choice to die or a choice to live the much more a born again believer much more a born again believer when you hear the doctors they'll say oh this man tried but he stopped fighting have you heard doctors say that he tried very hard it's just that he stopped fighting if he had just pushed a little he would have made it doctors know even in science that there is a human will that can override death even in science much more this body has been saved that's why you can lay hands on it and it will recover but to avoid this body from being constantly subjected to elements and to things this body will be redeemed Talatata. the redemption of this body is the wearing out the removal of this cloth not this cloth this cloth hold your leg say this is a cloth no not your cloth i say your leg hold it say this is a cloth hold it again say this is a cloth move your neck Say this is a cloth. It is called earthly suit. So one day you will remove this cloth and wear the redeemed cloth. When you wear that cloth, when you wear that cloth, you are free from prison. At that time, you can walk through. You can walk through this thing and pass without a scar because matter don't matter. Immortality has swallowed mortality. Are you here? It is that cloth you will need to live in the realm called heaven. Right now, you are in heaven but you can't see it because of this cloth when you remove this cloth and wear the other cloth you will be in heaven at once instant you are not going to travel the reason why you are thinking of traveling is because of this cloth which cloth this cloth because this cloth cannot get to lagos until it travels this cloth is used to traveling but when you remove this cloth travel ends paul says like this to be absent from the body is to be present no distance i'm preaching good this morning But until then, we keep this body under. Until then, we keep this body under. By knowledge. How do we keep this body under? By knowledge. So at that point was when Jesus destroyed the power of death by death. He destroyed death by death. In dying, he destroyed death. Look at 51 of that uh, Matthew 27. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom and the earth did quake and the rocks rent 
Hekebo. Look at 52. And the graves were opened. And many bodies of the saints which slept arose. And came out of the graves after his resurrection. And went into the holy city. And appeared to many. They entered Jerusalem. All the Old Testament saints. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. The day Jesus rose, every grave opened. Commotion everywhere. These Old Testament people entered town. They started locating their great-grandchildren. Hi, great-grandchild. It's grandpa, great-grandpa. Oh, bless you, great-grandpa. And they were, oh, oh. Commotion all over the city. People were seeing ancestors. Ancestors were appearing all over the place. It was a remarkable announcement. That a new day has just dawned on humanity. Glory to God. I say glory to God. When he gave up the ghost. And I'm closing with that. When he gave up the ghost. What actually happened? The Psalms and Peter will help us. Where did he go? I close with that. The Psalms and Peter will help us. First of all let's begin with Peter. Peter. Are you ready? Acts 2.23 Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God you have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. Whom God hath raised up having loosed the pains of death because it was not possible I love that word. It was not possible that he should be holding of it. For David speaketh concerning him I foresaw my Lord always before my face. For he is on my right hand that I should not be moved. Next verse. Therefore did my heart rejoice and my tongue was glad. Moreover also my flesh shall rest in hope. Next verse. Because thou will not leave my soul in hell nor will thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. Next verse. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance at that point he was dead psalm 16 says this is the day that the lord has made we will rejoice and be glad that quote was a prophecy concerning the resurrection it was a prophecy because the last verse we just read in Acts chapter 2 verse 28. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy. That was what David prophesied. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. That was the day of resurrection. It is a salvation scripture. That when he rose that day called resurrection you didn't hear me that day called resurrection that day uh -huh. resurrection is a day that day called resurrection and that day is a person resurrection is one day you didn't hear that and that one day is a person and that person is one person you know the prophecy of Haggai after two days after two days I will raise you up so the third day is resurrection and that third day is all of eternity in one day so between now and december we are still in one day in the next 25 years we are still in one day for a lifetime we are still in a day that day is resurrection and that day is a person what's his name Somebody say, you don't know what will happen. Maybe things will just be bad. No. I am in the day of joy. 
this is the day that the lord has made we will what what is that day what is that day resurrection who is resurrection jesus where are you in christ so what are you supposed to experience in christ all your life joy that day is joy i live in joy i live in joy and my joy is not tied to money it's not tied to a car it's not tied to a contract my joy is tied to a person no matter my circumstance it does not affect my mood that person affects my mood and whenever i think of him the only thing that comes out of my thoughts is joy glory to god and I have news for you this morning as a roundup. When he rose from the dead, I rose from the dead. The father forsook him. And the father looked at you and said, I will never forsake you. Never. The father didn't just wake up feeling good and say, I will never forsake you. No, it was on legal grounds. The father will not forsake you on legal grounds. There is legality committed to him not forsaking you. So whether the father feels it or he doesn't feel it is not important now. There's a legality to the fact that the father will never forsake you. Never. He will never leave you. He will abide with you forever. If the father will abide with you forever and he will never forsake you, where is losing salvation? where that's not losing salvation amen. amen he died i live he died i live he rose i rose he took my shame i will never have shame he was dumb i have a mouth to speak he was forsaken i will never be forsaken glory to god i say glory to god I prophesy to the first 1,000 of you whose amen will come like thunder, you will enjoy the dividends of redemption all the days of your life. You will live in joy. You will live in victory. You will live in triumph. You will live in celebration. If you stand up and shout that amen, receive it from every side. Celebration from every side. Celebration from every side. From every side. Lift your right hand and shout, this is the day that the lord has made i will rejoice is that how they rejoice you know that moment when jesus was separated from the father darkness covered the earth you know why all of creation said no we will not see the repression we cannot stand to see the father separated from himself creation shut down the greatest event of creation was taking place darkness everywhere darkness everywhere when he rose his resurrection brought light back to man I prophesy over you today whatever looks like darkness around your life is too late i send it back to sender somebody shall no more darkness the true light has come i walk in the light i receive the manifestation of the light by the light i rule darkness i rule over darkness by the light I thought I would hear powerful amen. amen. Lift your right hands and declare over you this morning. Wherever you're hearing the sound of my voice, whatever Jesus paid for that shouldn't be found around you, that is still hanging around you, I command it to be flushed out. A decree by the power of his resurrection. By the power of his resurrection. Enjoy, enjoy the victory. Enjoy the supply enjoy the blessedness and enjoy all that grace has provided in the name of jesus and i declare the remaining days of 2017 you swim in total victory swim in total victory 
your steps are ordered your life is ordered your body is ordered and i decree that your desires are granted they are granted they are granted they are granted i decree that the rest of this year you will have all sided testimonies to celebrate in the name of jesus joy joy in your houses in your marriages in your families in your career joy in the name of jesus thank you father it is done i thought i will hear a dangerous hymn welcome back ladies and gentlemen welcome back oh my goodness what a word today please don't adjust yourself and don't go away just stay with me patiently you know the word of god comes to give us light and the entrance of his life of his word give it light 